Hi, it's Henrik. Hello, Henrik. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Uh, and how about you? <laughs> I'm good. Henrik, I'm excited to have you on the show again. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but you're far the most frequent guest on the show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <And> I... <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think it's not a coincidence, actually, though. <laughs> it means that okay. you're doing something right, actually. Okay, well, that, that's good, because then I can somehow... I, I can look at the interviews with you, and, and I know I'm doing something right, because otherwise I have nothing to, to measure it on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. So, hot on the heels of your latest album, uh, The Digital Crucifix, uh, you've released your first compilation, uh, Henrik, uh, 10 years in the dark, <laughs> quite literal <laughs> title, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but it's a, we, we wanted to kind of uh, put, <laughs> speaking of spotlights, we wanted to put a spotlight on, on, on the band and, and that it's actually been around for such a long time because uh, I think when, when I, I, I don't follow so much uh, what happens in the music industry these days mm. but but I've seen since it's kind of difficult times and sometimes you see some e-science and this and this band they are quitting now and and the fans oh no this is such a shame and 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 then suddenly they realize and they've been around for like an 8 years or 9 years or 15 years oh wow they've been for uh, around for such a long time and it's such a shame they're quitting uh, and and I thought, okay, but we been, we have actually been around for ten years last year. So I thought, let's put a spotlight on that, even though we're not quitting, and and make people and and, and the fans and supporters aware of that it's actually been such a long time. I was kind of surprised myself. It was actually a decade of Evil Masquerade, but it was kind of cool. So so let's put a focus on that, uh, even though we're not quitting, uh, and make people happy for that we have actually been around for such a long time. Uh, and then that was also the idea of, of putting out the compilation album um, just to, to to market the anniversary year a little bit more. Uh, and also since we never did a compilation album, and f especially when we are out playing gigs, uh, people are coming to the march stand and, and they are asking, um, so what album should I get? Of course they should get the latest one, but since we have six albums out now, um, and maybe six albums is kind of a lot to buy for for a new fan. So this would also be a great way to to get to get to know the band a little bit more from from the whole career, and especially since it's the fans that shows the music. So so yeah, it's from a fan's perspective, so to say. Um, so so now you can if people come to to the show, for example, oh, what, what album should I get? Uh, yeah, I'm Try the, try this one. Uh, it's a little bit of of everything, and and it's from from the listener's point of view what they wanted to hear. So, so and also to to get the title ten years in the dark. So really make it clear we have been around for ten years um, um, to celebrate with us. Ten years in the dark and no heating on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ha I have heating now, <laughs> so it's it's going towards the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that you're doing something right, actually. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm working in normal temperatures now. <laughs> the success. <laughs> I gotta say, I love the irony of the title, though. It's ten years in the dark under the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and and of course um, we we have always dealt a little bit with with the darker side of, of things, even though we've done it with humor. Uh, so it, it it felt like just a great title for 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 the album. So we're 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 really happy for it. And and surprisingly uh, to me, I, I didn't think because it we already put out the digital crucifix uh, last year. So putting out one more album the same year normally people put out an uh, uh, compilation albums just to to fill the void between normal studio albums but that wasn't the point to filling anything with, with the album it was just to, to mark the anniversary so uh, i thought maybe putting out two albums one year would maybe be a little bit of overkill but it's doing really well and and people seem to like it so it's, it's the best sellers we have now of course pentagram is still going good Crucifix is going great, and also Ten Years in the Dark. So, so we we couldn't be happier. I think I'm working in 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 normal temperatures. <laughs>
the sales actually translated pretty great uh, into the heating bill then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, directly. And also <laughs> from, from old times, <laughs> I have lots of, of, of old heats to pay. <laughs> no, uh, I gotta say though, but I think it's a great idea, you know, releasing two albums in, in the same year in the sense that you, you manage to, you know, with the short attention spans of the people now, you manage to get the people in the headlines uh, two times a year now you know unless you've got a two or two you know to to promote yeah of course but we don't really <laughs> yes and no evil masquerade doesn't think that way uh with getting as much attention or whatever. we just think we need to do it as good as possible mm. um, but also now since we have dark music our own uh, company we of course need to think a little bit more strategic as well yeah. but we would never ever uh, put out anything just to put it out it, if it doesn't f qualify f for being as good as we think we can ever do it we will never release anything and it's the same with with uh, another new album it, it it will come when it's good enough it, it will never come 2015 because it's smart hopefully it will come a uh, new album this year but let's see Right. Uh, how come you decided to actually release a compilation? I think now you've got a six studio albums, a compilation album, and what about a live album? I don't think you've released a live album yet. So, so are there any plans for one? Yes. <laughs> actually, there have been plans for it quite a while. Hmm. Um, but it, it feels like somehow we we want to do just more gigs to begin with. <clears throat> and it's it's not that easy to get proper gigs still uh, go figure 10 years and uh, lots of albums out and still it's kind of hard to to get in a, in a decent gig at least of course you can get the local bodega uh, or pizzeria or something but but we can't do that because also we are so <coughs> so spread out because we are not all living in the same same country and yeah. and, and we, we need to meet and we need to to travel uh, from from a to b to c and and everything so so just the logistics it, it costs a little bit it's not that we're extremely expensive or something but but we can't do like so many other bands or i want to because i've been around for too long to 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 pay to play i, I will not do that so we we do the proper gigs uh, and still i I want, I want to do more gigs before we do an, a live album and when we do a live album uh, i don't want to do like it seems like nine out of ten bands are doing these days they're going recording a live album then they go home to the studio and replace everything and keep the audience yeah. because that's not a live album uh, that's just cheating the fans for for the experience and i think it's just silly and if you can't play don't do it i i really admire guys like Frank Zappa, for example, he, one of the greatest uh, live albums I ever heard, uh, Broadway the Hard Way, uh, and that's 100% live, and don't, they don't need to fake anything, um, and when we do the live album, that will be with the mistakes and everything, um, and hopefully there will not be so many mistakes, <laughs> but the few, the few that will happen, they should stay there, I think, because that's the real deal. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Now that you mentioned that you actually mentioned uh, really live albums, I remember, uh, you know, Typo Negative taking the piss by back in uh, 95, 94 or something with the album The Origin of the Feces. Do you remember that one? Which was a fake live album, and the the band actually stated that it's a fake live album. <laughs> you know, mm. they added. You yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, that's the, maybe the difference between them and so many of the other bands today, <laughs> because I, I know f too many bands. I, I shouldn't hang them out here. Uh, uh, they they can hide it uh, if they want, but 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 it, it's it's so obvious that that it's not what happened really on stage and also these days it's, I think it's also stupid if, if you don't have the, the honor of, of doing, doing it genuine and, 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 and keeping what happened it's also stupid because you have like 500 people in, in the audience with, with mobile phones filming everything yeah. because they prefer to film the gig than seeing it themselves but, but then it's documented this was really what happened and then they go home here, the live album, and oh, wow, he, he he sings much better here. It's not false at all, and he, now he remembers the second verse. Uh, I think that's just so stupid. 
talking about you know we mentioned before the uh, the short attention spans anyway you know people now go to the gigs to not to not to watch the gig and to record something in order not to watch it when they get back home you know it's <laughs> yeah of course because when when you actually are at the gig uh, you have the best sound that you will ever get from that gig and it's full full HD I'm pr pretty sure that the, the the quality of the picture will not improve from that and, and and then people have their whatever iPhones or bad or good telephones trying to film it it will be much worse and the sound will be terrible and they are looking at this tiny tiny little display yeah. instead of this huge stage it is just mind blowing <laughs> I, i don't know what they are thinking probably nothing no that's actually the digital crucifix in real life uh henry yeah it is it is <laughs> <laughs> that's one of many things that triggered that album uh, now uh, you know with the opportunity of the release of uh Uh, the Ten Years in the Dark compilation. Uh, I would like to do something like, uh, you know, a look back into the uh, past couple of years. Uh, how do you see the band has evolved and grown over the years since the inception of the band? Um, since the beginning. In the beginning, uh, it was not even meant to be a band. Uh, I was just tired of the whole industry thing. Uh, from past bands and contracts and labels and managements and everything, so I just, just I just closed locked the door to my studio from the inside and and stayed there with with nice coffee and and red wine and re wrote music just for myself. Uh, and I, and I just did it because I, I like writing music. I had no in idea or intention at all releasing anything, and I had also moved from Sweden to Denmark. I was kind of new in Copenhagen so I didn't know people but one thing led to another I met a few local musicians and, and we decided to, to try to record a few of the songs and it worked out pretty well and, and I had so much to choose from so we just took 10 songs that belonged together kind of and, and recorded them and, and that became even as great and labels got interested and, and before we knew it it was all over the place and I thought okay maybe I should actually start a band again and but then I should do things very differently compared to before because if I decide to start a band which I had decided it should be the band uh, that will continue I, I, I was tired and I'm still tired of, of joining something and it has to end because of drama or contracts or whatever so Starting Evil Masquerade was also a commitment that this band will continue. If I, if I stop this band, I will stop. Uh, and I, I didn't want like have band members in, in the band um, with bad priorities or, or, or whatever drama I've seen in, in other bands. Mm. Uh, so, so I just decided, fine, everyone is welcome. I really want... I really, really have wanted every lineup to, to to stay intact, but on the other hand, if if people lose their motivation or become problematic or whatever, it it should not be on the cost of the band. Uh, then they have to go because they were invited when they were motivated and and everything worked. Uh, and somehow, sometimes you need to part and and because the band need to continue. So that was also. How it started, so it's, it started kind of chaotic and no really idea where to go. And you can see that, I think, also on the first album. It's just, it's just it's really not much thought about it. Or it, maybe it looks like it's some complete maniac. It's, it's <laughs> has the thought, artist. Thought, thought, it's, has thought yeah. too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, and, and also we, we had a lot to prove to, to, to make kind of statement that we existed because there are so many bands now and it was at least as many bands back then so we just put together uh, the album and and played as much as it was humanly possible on that album just to to make an impression and i think it's uh, i still hear it occasionally and i think it's a lot of fun and it's, it sounds like we we were on some illegal stuff uh, which we weren't but uh, I think it's a lot of fun and it's completely insane <laughs> it's um, extravagant I would say Henrik <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, and, and absolutely it was honest uh, that's exactly where we were at, at that time 
and we still play some songs from 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 the early albums when we play now as well so so it's not that we don't recognize or or, or will be connected to that time at all uh, yeah. but then things evolved of course uh, and since if it became clear it should be a band uh, musically i tried to i didn't want to to be like in the beginning it was very neoclassical very uh, lots are going on and also all the reviews which were all most most of them were very positive positive in the beginning but everyone was stating us to be this neoclassical fantastic orchestra and I, I didn't want to i felt it right away i didn't want <laughs> to to make a long career as that band so even though i liked the music i felt it was very important to change direction there immediately after the first album to make it impossible to to for for people to to keep hang on to that that idea about the evil masquerade um and i think from album to album it's been a little bit like that uh trying to okay well, what did we like from from what we just did and what where did do we think we want to go now? Because I, I rarely see the fun in just copying what we just did. Um, so it's just be, I think it, it's been a very natural progression um, from album to album. And it seems like the supporters of the band agree because when when someone finds the band, if it was on the first album or if it was on the third album or fourth album, it seems like most of the people that finds us uh, continues following us. Of course, not all of them, but the majority, I think, they tend to stick with us when, when they have found us. And also when we get new followers, uh, just like on, on just the latest album, for example, uh, and, and they became, become more fans, and, and then they start to dig in the old stuff, and, and they like that as well, or most of it. So, so it, it seems like unintentionally we have some red thread that you can follow through through the whole thing and of course everything since this is what I do these days I, I don't do much more than, than work and think about Evil Masquerade so of course we try to refine it and, and make it more interesting or more effective or, or even more Evil Masquerade so, so I think it's getting better and better even though I liked the old stuff as well but, but I think we are really going the right way, as I, as I see it. Right, with uh, the, the third act, actually, in Fade to Black being, uh, you know, in my opinion, at least, a turning point to the, the you know, to the, to the sound of uh, Evil Masquerade as it stands now. Uh, I've, uh, it's, you know, it's very easy to notice, actually, that there is a more progressive aspect nowadays, if I could use the term, you know. Uh, would yeah. you say, Henrik, that this is intentional or part of the natural process, you know, of growing as a songwriter? <laughs> it was many things because because uh, I've come from before before I did Evil Must Grade, I came from compared to the the first couple of albums, it was more a little bit more powerful um, and more the classical like Sabbath, Du, that kind of music yeah. which I grew up with and, and which I hold very high um, as, as probably some of the greatest hard rock metal being written. Uh, and when we did the first album, um, uh, as I told you, it was the band was local guys that I got to know when I when I moved to Copenhagen and 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 when we recorded that, of course, then we need to do. And for example, the singer wasn't that powerful uh, and and didn't he didn't sound like anything that I was used to work with. And then when we were working with our second album it was also very clear that socially in the band he didn't work out very well and 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 the band felt it was very clear that we will not continue so and that was around when we had basically released the second our next album after that will be with another singer <clears throat> and and that somehow felt really good to me because then I felt that okay let's let's move on to the direction where I normally come from and get some more power behind the the microphone and 
of course that also motivates me as a songwriter uh, to, to write things that if, of course now all what I did in the past and, and was suddenly possible again and I could think in another way uh, and, and also put more focus on, on, on the vocalist uh, to, to, to hold the th whole thing together more uh, than right. was possible in our two first albums. Uh, and I think that was probably the, the the joy of going back to the vocalists I, I I was familiar or comfortable with in the past. That that made the change in the songwriting I think. Um, and and yeah, basically that's the way we continued after that because now I think we 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 will we will always continue with that kind of vocalists uh, from from now on or from then on. Right. How is uh, actually Tobias adapting to to the to being in the band? I know he's been, he's actually officially joined last year, a couple mm. of weeks before the uh, the release of uh, uh, the album. Because initially he joined as a you know to, to replace uh, uh, Apollo uh, just for a couple of gigs, but then he turned to to become a permanent member of the band. Basically, uh, when I had a talk with Apollo and 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 we came to the agreement then that it was probably for the best um, that we didn't continue with him because if, 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 I didn't feel like he he had the motivation or, or or time or he was very torn between different things with work and family and mm -hmm. and all that and, and also you can see all the other bands he was in he was in too many bands to begin with uh, and and he quit basically or stopped or I don't know his stories with all the bands but but he didn't continue with them with any of them actually uh, mm. no with, with none of them so so and and that was also the, how we felt it in, in even as great that he didn't feel that he was really there uh, even though we're still good friends and everything um, and and you might see him live with us some someday in a way um, if if we stand and need a, a vocalist uh, in in some situation, he has told us he's happy to to jump aboard and help out if we need it. So he's no bad blood or something. Um, but then I I knew about uh, Tobias since some years back when I saw him with a with a small band uh, here in Copenhagen at a club, uh, and I thought, okay, this is a good 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 vocalist that I could maybe work with someday. Um, so it was was very a natural point to to try him out, and it it works really good. So and then I invited him to to join the band uh, and play or record um, the, the, the digital crucifix album to really try it out also in the studio, uh, and it 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 worked very well. I I. But I, I asked him that if he wanted to join this band, uh, it should not be just for one album because I, I'm I'm not that interested in changing people. Um, um, so so, but he was he was happy for that. Right, and indeed he's a great voice. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so Henrik, uh, let's uh, hear something from uh, the band's back catalogue. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the moment has come again. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, ha I have no idea if I or what I have chosen before, but if I should choose something, uh, let's from from a live perspective. Um, when we played the last show, uh, we played in Sweden. I could see that the nature's calling made something happen in the audience because they suddenly were jumping up and down higher than they did before. So the nature's calling. Excellent.
This was the track The Nature Is Calling by uh, Evil Masquerade and uh, the latest studio album The Digital Crucifix and also their latest compilation album entitled Ten Years in the Dark. Uh, here with me is Mr. Henrik Flyman uh, talking about uh, the band's uh, past and future. Uh, so Henrik, 
So we've mentioned uh, the band's past albums uh, in general, Henrik. Uh, which uh, specific tracks from your back catalogue do you still listen to today and feel extremely proud uh, of and why? You know, you, uh, those moments that you actually said, oh, did I really write this thing? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see, I have some albums here. Uh, I'll, I'll, let's see if I, if I can recognize something. <laughs> um, of course, Black Ravens Cry is is one of those because um, when when we were about to, to release or or record Thought Act, uh, the Thought Act album, that was one of the uh, because I normally play all the songs for, for the guys and ask if, if there are some songs they prefer more or less or uh, and I, when I had played all the songs from the track list, uh, I also said I have I have a couple of more um, songs uh, that's not on the track list. For example, I have this one, and I played Black Rain's Cry, but I thought maybe it's a little bit too pop <laughs> to be used, <laughs> uh, and I was completely voted down. Um, it was obviously not poppy, and it should be used, and they were apparently also right because now it's basically our steady encore number when we play live, so uh, and people seem to like it a lot. So that that is really cool to to write a song that so many people seem to like also across uh, borders of genres. Uh, so that was maybe one of those moments, and also like both of the clown <laughs> uh, from the second album is fun because that's the first uh, music award I ever got from that song. Uh, it was uh, a music award in America called the uh, Just Plain Folks Music Awards um, in 2009. Yeah. After, far after the album, I was contacted about that one, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and what else? I have some albums here. <laughs> um, first album. Yeah, maybe the the intro from the first album, where it goes completely bananas. <laughs> that, that was kind of fun because. Uh, <laughs> That that was also one of those out of the blue moments uh, when General Motors uh, from America contacted me and asked, "Can we use this to sell our cars?" <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, what? <laughs> you're you're basically one of the biggest companies in the world uh, selling f extremely expensive cars, and you want to use the, our, our our intro for our debut album <laughs> to sell those?" But I, I guess they wanted something powerful that kicked ass uh, because they probably think. And I think it works really great, actually. Something. <laughs> yeah, it probably does, because they used it for like three years. <laughs> uh, like in cinemas and television all across North America. So that, I don't know, that, that's maybe maybe more of the results of the songs that made it, uh, I'm a little bit proud of it more than maybe the song itself, because I think it's just like 200 guitars playing everything that's possible. Uh, but 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 it 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 was a fun story uh, in the end with it. And let's see, Fate to Black. Yeah, I believe in sin. Last song from Fate to Black right. is one of those songs. But I think that was the first song I ever wrote for that album. And I knew right away that this should be the last song from on the album. I ha I hadn't written any other song for the album. Um, so so that was kind of fun. Um, um, what more? Right. Uh, Pentagon album, something on that one. Yeah, yeah I think um, Strangers Might Fool You, <laughs> that small instrumental part. Yeah, uh, indeed, and that yeah. was in our old forum. We had one of those really dinosaurs forum in, in the old days on our website, and and we had some discussion there uh, where where the people. Uh, came up with the recommendations for, for songs we should cover uh, and I, th I read it and I thought okay yeah maybe this is interesting but, but it, nothing really caught my eye uh, and, and then a guy came up with this brilliant idea um, why don't you do because in in the old days maybe not many people know this uh, but in the old days um, just like in in modern days you can jam around the blues for example everyone everyone knows what the blues is yeah. uh, you have three chords and you know how they progress and, and you can improvise upon it uh, in the old days uh, the classical composers they had a similar thing uh, where, where they had a theme with a, a chord chord progressions uh, moving around a little, a little bit more complex than the blues 
which was called a folia, F O L L I E A, and they they used many of the the very well known uh, composers have done their improvisations upon this chord structure, uh, and, and they did their own folia. So I thought, okay, this sounds like uh, an interesting uh, thing to do because this this is new. So so let's do it. Uh, and then, of course, we also need to incorporate a little bit of even masquerade humor. <laughs> of course. So, and it needs a title. So, just to call it folia, uh, no one will know what it is anyway. So, it needs to have a title. So, I, I wrote a little bit of text uh, at, at the end of it. Uh, Strangers might fool ya. <laughs> uh, so, so there, there you have folia, but it became fool ya. <laughs> um, so that's actually why the title is, because it's just to play on words uh, with the folia. Um, so, so that was kind of fun, and I think it turned out really good. We, we were mixing it with Tommy Hansen in Jailhouse Studios. When we came to that song, he just pressed stop and said, wow, what is this? This is, this is not music, this is art. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he he he's heard a lot of music, so that that was really cool. I, I like it as well. And then actually, and, um, I believe that I I, yeah, sorry. I actually regard those three tracks. You know, uh, "Strangers Might Fool Ya," uh, "Where the Fire Dies," and "The Golden Ratio." You know, as one track, they actually fit so well together as one track. If you come to think about it, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the the track flow is extremely important on al every yeah. album, and sometimes you're you're more fortunate. Uh, and and I agree, they really blend nicely together. Whenever so, I actually presented them on the show itself, I've always placed these three tracks together because they somehow fit so well together. See, that's the evil masquerade thing uh, you're doing there, Henrik. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but it's cool. To, um, so, who knows? Maybe maybe more of that in the future. Um, do I have some albums? Yeah, we have a yeah Crucifix album. Um, basically, I'm that's I'm basically very proud of everything on that one. Um, maybe it's because it's new, but but it feels like something has happened there. There were some loose ends or small things that I maybe in, in the past ah, I should have done that differently. Mm -hmm. But on this album, it's not very much of that. Um, I, I really have a hard time picking anything on, on this one because I think really it's... it's uh, I'm biased, of course, but I think it's really good. Would you say that um, uh, the Digital Crucifix is actually your more mature album? Uh, mature sounds really boring, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe our most effective album, I, w I would say, because it, it's, it captures a lot of what we have been trying to do all the time uh, along the way. But it it really works better than it has ever done before, I think, because you have the melodies, you have the harmonies, you have the, the power, you have the dynamics, you have the variation, uh, you have the track list and, and, the, and, and the track flow from... The, through the whole album and even down to the artwork uh, everything really seemed to to click really well on that album so i'm i'm extremely happy for it right uh now hendrik um let's talk a bit about your current work because as far as i know you're currently working on a new uh, a new um material uh what should we mm. expect from your new studio album music wise um, it's very hard to tell because I don't know myself, <laughs> uh, and I never do because right now I'm in that phase. Normally, I, I I start work with the new album when the the, the, the current one is uh, on the way to the to the printing factory, <clears throat> because then I can let go and and start working on something new. But last year was so hectic with with tours. Um, also with Lacrimosa and yeah. and and a bit with Even Great as well and and also since we also put out two albums we did the video and and w lots of stuff happened last year <laughs> so I actually didn't have my normal time to to write music as I normally do so so it's basically now uh, where I picked it up again and are going into writing mode and normally when I do that. Also, as I always done in the past, I, I just write without much thought and just try to to, to get some material um, documented and, and see where I want to go. Uh, and and then when I find okay, this seems 
to belong together a little bit and and then that's normally how, how I find the way okay this should probably go in this direction then I try to continue writing a little bit down that road but not necessarily it it's how it's going to end so it's right now it's, it's very open but if I should compare it to, to, to the old albums since I'm so very happy for for uh, the digital crucifix I can imagine um, that it will maybe remind more about that one than some other album but on the other hand if I would just have done the crucif uh, digital crucifix number two I would probably be bored at the end and 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 then something will change. So I think maybe you will recognize the Crucifix album in it, but there will most likely guaranteed be a, a different touch to it um, because otherwise I will be bored and it will not be released. Right. No, Henrik, because I know you're very much attuned to what is going on around the world in general. You know, uh, same as with what, with what happened on uh, the digital crucifix, actually. Uh, in which uh, social phenomena have you drawn your attention to, uh, you know, from uh, as far as the lyrical subjects of the album are concerned? Um, from, you, you mean the new album? For the new, or you haven't decided yet? I mean, I have not decided yet because uh, I, I don't, I, I want, I want to find the musical direction first. Um, because I think for, for me, it always starts with, with, with the musical theme and, and to be comfortable with that. Uh, and, and then when I got them that far, uh, of course, I have lots of thoughts going around in my head, and, and <laughs> I have lots of opinions about lots of stuff. Uh, so, so usually, some of those opinions or some of those ideas uh, floating around in my head usually works with whatever music comes out. Um, but, but I think the music needs to be there first because before I try to lay down too much lyrics on it. Uh, it's, it's also not very unusual when when I write music that maybe some demos are are demoed. Uh, I, I demo them with some vocals uh, on, and, and then later on, when I okay, this is maybe the way we should go. Then I maybe I just completely delete the lyrics and, and write new ones for 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 the right direction of of, of the album uh, to to make it really work. So, but. but for now, it's a little bit too early to say. Right. Uh, we actually mentioned live appearances before. Uh, and since we were actually talking about the past, uh, out of all your live appearances so far, which ones are the most special for you and why? Maybe, let's see. The debut gig is always special because it's the first gig you, you do with the band. Uh, and, and the debut gig we did, did with Evil Masquerade, it was in it was a closed gig uh, it was just for i think if i remember right maybe I, I don't think there were invitations for it but but it it was just spread to to a small community uh, who were aware of it uh, and it was in copenhagen but it was far out uh, in copenhagen it was not in some fancy place in the middle of the city so it was very unpractical to get there and there was nothing else around there was just like a war zone and, and it looked like shit and in in a basement there a small basement there were a bar and and a stage looked a little bit like a bordello <laughs> and and there where, where we presented a few songs from 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 the debut album and that was kind of interesting i have a bootleg from that gig um not very good at all the the techniques about it uh, around with the filming and sound, and but, but it, it's possible to see and hear it. So I, I've I've been holding on to that to see when whenever the time is right to to put it out. Uh, so that was kind of fun because it was new and, and special and, and and very odd location and and the whole thing was odd. It was very evil masquerade and especially as we were back then. Uh, so it was a lot of fun and and we played great. I think uh, from what I could hear, it was really good. And if I should say something more, That's it cool. would be like last year, because we never played any big festivals before, and last year we were invited to play at Dockham uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, and that was great, because that was the biggest thing we've 
been doing uh, with this plan. So that was really, really a good experience as well, uh, even though the time slot was maybe not the, the coolest. But it was great to, to actually be accepted in, into to the more, uh, the bigger or more normal, commonly metal communities, uh, such as Dokkum, which is a, absolutely great festival and very professional done. So that was one of them as well. Right. So you, they didn't let you play in the night, right? <laughs> no, no, uh, absolutely not. It was it was daytime, uh, well, uh, and we actually opened the second day uh, yeah. mm -hmm. in in the middle of the day. So I thought, okay, maybe no one will be here. But I was really surprised because people showed up, and it was kind of it, not completely full, but but it, it it was people through the whole uh, before before the stage the whole way back, uh, and and even though they were severely damaged by hangovers uh, since the party last day they 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 stayed and and they really seemed to like it so that was cool absolutely brilliant now uh what other plans are there for more live appearances henrik uh, have you uh, got anything more in store for us basically we are trying to contact every place where where live music is being played um and and try to to get through and, and, and make something happen. Um, so it's basically, we as soon as someone wants us to come, we will come, but, but it's not that easy actually to, to get that many gigs, which are just a little bit decent. So so for, for right, right now we have a couple of things, but those aren't actually until next year. <laughs> Uh, which seems a little bit interesting, uh, and some new countries for us uh, coming up. But this year we still have nothing. Um, so let's see. It's still in in the early parts of the year. So so I'm sure something will will come along the way later in in the summer maybe or something. So let's see what happens. But but right now we have nothing, even though we want to have as much as possible. Right. Now, now it's pretty ironic come to think about it, Henrik, because uh, it's become so much easier to release as many albums as possible. But, you know, it's, so, it's become so hard to actually get to book gigs, right? Not just for you, for every band out there, actually. I guess so, but, but, but again, if I don't want to force myself up to anyone because it's not because it's easy work out go out playing. It's a lot of work and, and it costs a lot of money to and arrangements and everything, so... Uh, I will. I will only play when when people want us to play. But but we are uh, is sending out letters and emails and everything, uh, letting people know. And I'm telling it here now on your radio station that we we are interested in gigs. So absolutely. Um, but not maybe on the local pizzeria, but some cool festival or or some rock club or or whatever. That, that would be cool. Absolutely. No, uh, you're not sold on uh, free pizza then, Henrik. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like pizza, but uh, not that much. <laughs> no, actually, because you you actually mentioned before that you know some musicians are actually going out, you know, uh, pretending you know to to be uh, on the spotlight just to to become barman. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you see that occasionally. You you, you indeed, you yeah. Play play in the band just to to be recognized in your small community, and and then you suddenly are are the guest bartender at the local bodega, and and people come in and and oh wow, there is uh, this guy and this guy he plays in whatever. Uh, I'm not that interested in that. <laughs> I prefer being home alone uh, writing music. That's absolutely true, and that's hard for you, Henrik. That's why, Hen uh, <laughs> you know, Evil Masquerade are doing what they do right now, uh, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, it's, it's just a result of what, what, what you present, so we, we just try to, to get better and, and do it as good as possible and, and play as many shows that we are allowed to play. Right, so uh, what about uh, the future plans for the band? Uh, you mentioned the release of the album is uh, planned for uh, th later this year, right? Um, the, right now I just try to, to write a lot of music. Um, and I try to write music that hopefully will impress me. Uh, and when I have a bunch of those songs, I will take it from there and present it or, or along the way have some listening um, moments with the band and, and, and discuss a little bit where, where to go. 
Um, but it, it needs to be really good first before before saying anything about an album. But there will be a, a seventh album, a studio album from Evil Masquerade, and if statistically, if I if I look back to 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 earlier years, it will probably we will probably start recording this year, and and who knows, it may be even is released this year. But that's completely up to if if I write music that is good enough to be released. Right. Um, so I would like to thank you so much for the interview, Henrik. It's been a great pleasure having you on the show. Uh, hoping to do it again soon, of course. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's always great pleasure. Uh, and if not before, so there will be a new album, and I'm 100% sure there will be lots to speak about. <laughs> absolutely. Would you like to close the interview with another truck from... Uh, uh, the compilation album, let's say the compilation album, so we can touch upon something from the previous albums uh, once again. Yeah, let's take from the first album then, uh, just to to go way back in time since we t- took from the, the newest album. Um, but You Were Smiling is one of the, the audience favorites from that album. Excellent. Again, thank you so much, Henrik. Uh, it's been a great pleasure again. Hope to have you for the fourth time. You're going to break a record on the show. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I'm up for it for sure.